Hi everybody. It is January the 10th, 2021. We are wrapping up the Ohio 2020-2021 deer season. Um, one thing that I have done in the past is put a video up of what I've got in my pack. I've had a pretty good uh, season this year. I've had some pretty good luck in the past. Uh, and I think one of the things with luck, if you uh, are well prepared, you will have uh, a, a little bit better luck when you're out in the field. So this is what I've got in my pack. I'd like to kind of have a discussion with you all uh, down in the comments as far as uh, what you think about this. Is there something that I'm forgetting in my pack that maybe you carry that's a, a real game changer? Is there uh, something I've got that maybe you, know, maybe you feel shouldn't be in this pack? I, I want to open that dialogue up. This is Similar to a video I made a few years back, and some things have changed over the course of uh, time with this. So that's the purpose of this video. This is what I've got in my pack. What do I, uh, what do I carry with me to help myself be a, you know, I, I would say I'm an above average hunter as far as success goes. I've been doing this 20 years. This is what I'm passionate about. Uh, not trying to gloat or anything like that, but that's that's my take on it anyhow. I, I have I have had a lot of success and I think a lot of uh, a lot of that success is due to some of the gear that I've got plays into it if nothing else. So that's the purpose of this video. Comments down below. What uh, what do you think? What would you change? Do you think it's do you think it's set up pretty well? I want to open that dialogue with you all. Um, I'm gonna get you in here closer and we'll start taking this pack apart. All right, everybody, so I'm just going to kind of slide this stuff from um, the top of the screen. I'll slide it in uh, down for me. This is from left to right. You all are on the right side of my table here. Um, I'm just going to slide this in and kind of talk about what it is. And uh, when we're done, I'll have it all laid out here so you can see everything all, uh, all put together here. So the first thing that has played a crucial role in my success this year this is kind of a late comer to the game it is a set of electric heated socks these have rechargeable batteries in them these batteries will last uh, they say 25 hours on the low heat setting and that's the setting that i use those on the big thing for me i have a hard time staying in the sand if my feet get cold and these really help out with that um, they heat the bottom of your of your uh, instep, I guess, the bottom of the front of your foot with this part right here. Um, and that that really makes a big difference for me. Even if it's if it's 35 degrees outside with my heavy boots on, I still am cold by the second hour of being out there. So these have helped me stay in the stand longer. And that's a big thing for me if I'm not comfortable. I don't want to be out there. These help me stay comfortable when I'm on the sand for those long sits. After the heated socks, let's see, what else have we got here? This is my, my hat that I wear. Uh, one thing that this has, in addition to just being a, a cap, keep the sun out of your eyes like that, like a baseball hat will do, my action camera, this mount will mount on to the top of this bill, right like that. You've seen me wear this in my videos. If you've, uh, if you've watched any of my videos, this is it. This is the hat that I am wearing most of the time if I'm in a stand. I've got one of these in black also. Uh, I think that one's out in the truck. But both of them are set up that same way. Uh, it, it's a a uh, force multiplier, I guess, for me. It's something that it combines two things. It's a, it's a really good compromise. Uh, again, you've got the hat, the camera's light enough. It doesn't really bother me to have that up on top. If you're wanting something like this, all that is, that's just a quarter 20 carriage bolt that I cut down. That quarter 20 thread's a real common thread, and you can mount, uh, that's a standard mount. That's the standard size, um, that's the standard size thread that is in most cameras. So that's uh, that's something that I use. This has really helped me. I like having a second camera angle when I'm doing my hunts, and that really helps me 
Uh, when it comes to putting videos together, I like having some redundancy. One of these days I'm going to do a video about tips from the years that I've been doing this and redundancy is one of those things. So having that second camera, it's a, it's a nice feature. Sometimes I forget to turn it on, but it's, it's nice to have there, you know, when you're, when you're out in the field. Another thing with this cap, another compromise, a combination thing that this has got, it's got that light up underneath. This is, this is probably one of the best pieces of, of kit that I've got as far as versatility and uh, utilitarianism. You've got the hat, you've got the camera, you've got the light all right up there. Uh, really nice to have. That's my, uh, that's my cap that I wear when I'm out in the field. Another thing, this might seem like a modern day thing, which it is, is just a, a portable battery bank. I put Velcro on the back of all mine. I've got Velcro on the back of my phone. Uh, so these will, this will stick together on the back of my phone if I'm out there. If I'm, if it's a November hunt, if I'm hunting the rut and I'm gonna be staying out there all day, if the deer are moving all day, this is nice to have. Keeps you, keeps you busy, keeps you from getting too antsy in the middle of the day. So a, a good size uh, battery pack, a good size power pack, something that I like to keep with me as well. The next thing, I suppose if you're filming hunts, this is no stranger to you. My camera arm, and in addition to the camera arm, the ratchet strap to go with my camera arm. Some, some modifications I've done to this, I guess. I cut the strap down and tied a knot in the back of it so I'll never have to worry about the, the buckle sliding off. That's the only modifications I've done to the strap that came with this. This particular one's a muddy, uh, it's a muddy camera arm. I took the head off. This is a fluid head. One thing I like about the fluid heads like this, you don't have to worry about like real jerky camera motions. One thing I don't like about the fluid head is it, it tilts the camera down real slow. You got to make sure that you get it tight when you're at the level that you want. Some other modifications I did with this, these are new bolts that I've put in here. Uh, I'm not sure what my rationale was for that, but it must have been better, you know, something that I thought was better than what came with this unit. Uh, and I like that real well. That's what it was. It was real wobbly uh, up and down. It had some shake in it. So this was my modification with that, which has uh, proven itself pretty good this year. I haven't had a whole lot of wobble with that. Uh, another thing that I did, I drilled a hole here. This is another quarter 20 carriage bolt that I ran through the width of both of these. That keeps this just from, from falling apart, from sliding. Uh, when I've got my pack on, that's nice to keep this unit uh, nice and tight up against the pack. So that's one modification that I did to this as well. This will slide out. You, you can you can really... Uh, you can really do a good job with this, I think, and it's a relatively inexpensive unit. With this fluid head that I put on here, I have in the past forgotten the, I'm not sure what this is called, but the, the piece that mounts on the bottom of the camera and then goes into this head. I've, I've forgotten that at the house before. If I go to my ground blind or something and then I forget that. So something that I did to, this as well, that hole, and then this bolt here, that's gonna lock the uh, rotation on the camera if you get that tight, but that goes up through that hole, and then I carry this washer in there with me, so if it comes down to it, you know, if I get to the woods and I realize I don't have that piece, this is, a, this is one of those redundancy pieces that I've got. I can, I can work with this without having to you know, just not film that particular hunt. You never know when you're gonna have a, you never know when you're gonna have a real successful hunt. You're never gonna know uh, in advance, hey, this is gonna be the day. Uh, it could happen anytime. So that is an additional modification I did to this, but I really like this unit. Nice and nice and small, nice and lightweight, a good addition to my pack. And if you are filming hunts, and you don't use a camera arm, I would suggest that. These, these do a really nice job. Let's see. 
I guess I'll show you the pack right now. Uh, and then I'm going to take this back off screen. But with that camera arm, when I'm taking it into the woods, these, I think I drilled this hole where my finger's at up here. I drilled that hole. So what I can do with this, I've got these two hooks that are mounted to my pack. One goes there, one goes there, and I can carry it into the woods like that. The weight will hang this like that and uh, keep it out of the way and keeps it from flopping around. It's a really good way to carry these into the woods. Yeah, I will. I'll show you the whole pack as a unit here uh, when we're done, how this all kind of goes together. On the bottom of my pack, I've got a, a set of straps. Uh, this is where I keep this jacket. If you get into the woods and you realize it's a little bit colder than you thought it was going to be, it's nice to have an additional layer on the bottom of your pack. So that's what this is. It's just a, an extra large uh, fleece sweatshirt, zip up, and it, I like it. It's, it's, again, another light thing. I've got all this light stuff, so the pack ends up being a little bit heavy, but I'm not walking real far. But it's not overly heavy. It's not a super heavy unit. But it's, it's nice to have. I've put that on a couple times this year when I was a little bit underdressed. Again, help you stay in the woods a little bit longer. Um, with something like this. And it straps onto the bottom of my pack, so it's not something that uh, takes up a lot of space on the inside. Next thing. This is a pretty, pretty simple guy. I'm not sure what exactly this is. I think this is a, uh, it's some kind of military pack, maybe a dump pouch for some, I think it might be a canteen pack. I think it is a canteen pouch. Uh, yes, one quart canteen utility pocket specialty defense systems. What I use this for, my camera up on uh, the tripod right now and my hat camera when I'm packing stuff away for the season. Put everything in here. It's got these molly straps on it. I don't use those, but it will, uh, you know, I can snap these on the side of my pack and carry my camera in like that so it's not getting smashed up inside. This'll, uh, this'll give that a nice place to go. Another thing, if I'm leaving the stand for the day, or in the morning, excuse me, if I'm, if I'm going back and I wanna hunt that same stand, I'll put my camera and stuff in here, that hole in the bottom, It'll let uh, any water that might get in there, if it, if it rains in the middle of the day, well, that'll keep the camera from sitting in water or getting rained on up on top of my tripod. I suppose another thing you could do with this would be put it up on top of your camera if it does start raining to keep the rain from getting on that. So this is just another good, uh, pretty versatile piece of kit that I keep in my pack. It's got these pouches on the side. I'll keep batteries for my hat camera. Um, and for my film camera, you can keep extra SD cards and things like that in there as well, if you forget those. But a versatile little piece of kit. Next thing. This is another new one for me in the cold weather. My pack will change a little bit when it gets time for uh, you know, the early season hunts, but these are another piece that I keep in there. My hands and my feet, they just get cold. Uh, these are rechargeable heated gloves. Um, I think my batteries, my batteries are not plugged in or they're dead. Either way, uh, that light's not coming on. Yep, they must be dead. But these are, these are electric uh, battery heated gloves, which are, like I say, another little bit of kit that I keep with me um, in the pack. Well, I'm glad we're doing this video because I'm going to have to charge these batteries. These batteries go in the, this little zipper pocket here. Again, handy to have. I, I guess I'm glad to, to see that now. I've got a charging station downstairs where I charge all these. Um, maybe I need to unplug my batteries when I'm done using these in the woods. With these guys though, they are heavy. It's a good, just on their own, they'd be a decent glove. Uh, with these though, these will keep your hands uh, warmer than they would be otherwise. You can wear hand warmers, but these heat the whole way through a lot like those heated socks that I showed you earlier. I do really like to have these with me. They do warm up nice. If I am cold and I'm trying to, if, if I'm cold and I've got deer coming in, I get the shakes when I see deer and I get the shakes when I get cold. And if those two things are together, I just about can't, can't contain myself. So 
These help keep my hands warm. My heated socks help keep my feet warm. I think I'm missing some parts of my kit that I just have in the truck that I'll wear when I go out, but uh, that's another thing that I'll, I'll wear to, to stay warm in the late season. I've got a, a bomber hat that I wear the, with the ears in the late season also, which that makes a difference as well. Let's see. I'm just kind of flying blind with these. I haven't, I didn't prepare for this too much. Okay, next piece here, we got a folding saw for cutting things and it's got two different blades. It's got a bone saw blade and uh, what looks like a, a pruning blade. The blade that's on it is, I can open this, there we go. The blade that's on it's a pretty aggressive uh, blade also. It's got that position there, it locks, nice solid unit. You can tighten it down even uh, from there. Like to have this, you never know when you're gonna need to cut uh, you know, do some pruning, get some stuff up out of the way. This is nice to have, nice ergonomic job with the three blades in there. If you needed to, you know, split the pelvis on a deer, you could do that, cut the legs off. Nice lock back unit and a pretty small size. Uh, nice and compact. Fits in the pack real nice. It's got that Velcro clip. If I wanted to hang it on the outside of my pack, I could. I used to carry a hatchet and the saw is the better of those two options, at least in my opinion. My old rangefinder, I've got a rangefinder that I keep on my safety harness. Uh, another thing that I did this year, I got these, got some webbing strap and some of these uh, clasps. I think clasps is what you call those, these, these uh, connection units there. Uh, so if I've got my my good range finder, my new range finder, I don't know that it you know it ranges the same as this thing does. It's a little bit faster, uh, but that'll clip on to the end of the tether for that. Uh, if the battery goes dead on one of these, it's nice to have that redundancy. You never know. Again, if I'm out there and I've got a, a big buck that steps out at 37 yards and it looks like 30 yards, you know, if I don't have a way to range that, I might shoot under it. In any case, you're hedging your bets. That's another one of those tips I'm gonna put in that video that I'll post one of these days. You wanna hedge your bets as much as you can. You wanna do everything you can to make yourself be successful. If you've got some redundancy built into, built into your kit, you'll, uh, at least in my opinion, you'll have better odds for success. So that's another piece of kit that I keep in my pack. A basic first aid kit and never had to use this there's again just some basic stuff in here i probably ought to ought to uh update this but this is what i've got in here right now uh, it's something if it if it came down to it i'd be i'd be better able to you know if i if i did get myself cut or hurt or something like that i'd have better chances of getting uh, myself taken care of than if i didn't have this so that's another piece of kit that I keep in my keep in my pack. You never know. Nitro gloves. Uh, my hands, especially, they're they're dry. They get cracks in them in the winter time. One thing, you know, if you're uh, if you're cutting a deer up and you've got you know an exposed cut or something. You could get a bloodborne thing. Not really my main concern. My main concern with these, uh, if I've got these gloves on, when I'm gutting a deer or butchering a deer, I, I wear them for both. These are primarily to gut deer with. Uh, if I've got those, well, I'm gonna be uh, able to drive my truck without getting blood on the steering wheel when I'm done. So I keep a keep a set of, there's probably 10 pairs of nitro gloves in there. Keep those in my pack as well. I think that's it as far as inside the big pouch goes. On the outside, keep just a, a good flashlight. Again, redundancy, you wanna have that. 
Uh, I've got an extra face mask that's in there, extra screw and bow hook. I've got some eye black. This is something I started doing when I was down in Mississippi. If I somehow forget my uh, face mask, if I don't have something to cover my face up, one thing, this would be able to uh, break the outline of my head up a little bit. This would also, if you're out in the sun and you do have a face mask on, if you've got the sun you know, in the morning if you're facing east or in the evening you're facing west, uh, put, these, put this under your eyes. I've done that before. Take some of the glare off as the sun gets below the brim of your hat. Uh, handy to have. Again, something super light that I like to have with me. Last thing in that pack is a couple judo tips. If you've got a uh, target of opportunity, you might say, if I've got some uh, raccoons or something like that that comes in and I can take a couple of those out off of the farm, uh, these give me that option. If I don't have these, I don't have that option. That's everything in that pouch. Last pouch that I've got here is on the front. Okay, this is... Let's move that stuff out of the way. Uh, we're getting we're running out of table space, everybody. Sorry. This is a Onyx EDC 3.5 inch knife. One thing I love about these knives, one, it's got a thin blade and it's super easy to keep sharp. The other thing, it's got these replaceable blades. So you can get, um, you know, you can have these nice scalpel blades. They make a gut hook that goes on there. I use those, I love them. These are affordable. It's a, got a polymer handle on it. So again, fairly lightweight. It's small enough that you can put it in your pocket if you wanted to. I put this on the front pouch on my pack, but just a really good versatile tool. Rather than have to carry you know, a knife with just a knife edge and a knife with a gut hook on it, well, you can have both here. The only extra weight that you're adding is the weight of the blades, which are fairly lightweight. So that's a, another thing that I keep in my pack that I really like, a good, good thing to have. And a set of hand warmers. Pretty self-explanatory what those do. All right, that's everything in the pack. That's everything out of the pack. This is, uh, you can see most of it. This is the pack itself. Um, I've got these buckle straps on each side, which are nice. You can you can tighten the tighten the unit up to keep it tied up to your body. Um, on the quiver side, again, I've got one of those straps that runs through there and buckles up to keep the top of my quiver from being on the side of that. I guess, yeah, I've got my quiver mounted to my pack on its own. I do not care for having a quiver on my bow. I think, you know, the back of the, the bolts are gonna be uh, shaky in a quiver. They're not supported. If you're using a compound bow especially, you're gonna have a lot more length hanging out the back of these. I am not a fan of keeping a quiver on a bow. I love having a quiver on my pack. It takes the weight you know, this extra weight off of the bow, if you've, got, if you've got to hold your bow up for a long time and you've got that weight out at the front, not a fan, never been a fan in the, in the years that I've been doing this. Not a fan of having the um, quiver on the front of your bow or on the side of my bow when I was using a compound bow. So yes, I've got my quiver on the side of my pack and it's got a quick detach. If I want to take that off, if I'm gun hunting, don't have the quiver with me. If I wanted to take this off the bow and hang it on a hang it on a limb, I've got this here to do that with. Quiver stays on my pack. You know, everybody's got their own opinion of that, but for me and my money, that's where that's gonna go. Get that out of the screen. I do want to talk about my bolts a little bit because they've I've got five on here and they're all a little bit different. This is something I've I probably put this quiver together probably 10 or 15 years ago. This is an old, like something off of a bare white tail. This is an old quiver bracket right here. I cut that off and drilled it out so I'd have some support on the front of this quiver because I like this to put on the, onto my pack because it's got, the, it's got a big, um, it's got a big clip so it, it does a good job staying on the pack. 
and then the back is just traditional there. But that was a, a really good, uh, I guess, invention that I did. 20 inch pile driver carbon express bolts. The bow that I'm using is a 10 point Titan M1 uh, crossbow. These have got uh, Predator knocks on the back of them. The last, so I bought two packs of these Predator knocks. You can see those. I bought two packs of these Predator knocks out of each of the packs. One of them has been faulty, but I've got four good knocks and I've used them for the past couple years anyhow. Um, I did not check with my last hunt. The last hunt that I went on, I did not check my knocks before I went out. The one knock that I shot on my bolt that I shot my doe with, well, it was the one that didn't work in that last pack. So, uh, live and learn, I suppose. But yes, 20 inch carbon, uh, carbon express pile driver bolts. I don't get into the whole front of center stuff. That's not something I spent a whole lot of time developing for my bow. Um, so it is, it balances. Well, right there. So, um, it's got a little bit, I suppose. I don't know that much about it. Um, on the front, some variety of Rage 2-blade. These are Rage 2-blade tri-pan uh, tri crossbow bolts, uh, crossbow broadheads, excuse me. And they're a, it's a good head. That last doe that I shot at was good. I don't really know that I buy all the hype, slap cut, you know, that sounds all like a bunch of uh, marketing stuff to me, but I do believe in the product. Uh, I've got one of these downstairs, but they they open up super wide. They're scary looking. Uh, and I like trying new gear. I like buying new gear. I like to use new stuff. I like to use good stuff. Titanium ferrule, uh, and I think they said 2.3 inch cut uh, with these bolts, uh, with these broadheads, excuse me, which I really like that. These are they should be a pretty nasty cut. That last doe that I shot, I don't think they opened all the way, which I've never had a, a problem with with some of my other broadheads, which I'll show you here in a second. But I'm gonna I'm gonna give those another another go. Two of my broad or two of my bolts. Well, I keep getting those two terms mixed up. Two of them are built the same. The third bolt that I have, this has got a rage. Uh, hypodermic broadhead on it. This is my coyote bolt, I suppose I would say. If I see a coyote coming across a field or something like that, I have the ability and the time to switch out. I could switch to this, uh, which is some of my older stuff. It's got a predator knock on it that I've used before through an animal. Um, but that is a little bit, uh, I suppose, lesser bolt. These hypodermic heads, love them. I, they have served me well this season. But you can see the difference in the blade length between those and the um, Rage Tripan broadheads. So you've got a little comparison there. Fourth bolt. So this is the, the fourth one in there is my decocking bolt. You can buy heads for these. I bought decocking bolt heads. Uh, and I had like $15 in each of them. Get you a big fat fender washer. Go to the hardware store, get your fender washer. That's got enough beef to it. That's not gonna get all bent out of shape and mess your arrows up. You've got enough um, insert in there. I mean, that, that locks on there good and nice and way, way cheaper than buying those. I think the one I had was called a nub which I, uh, I suppose I had enough of that. So I bought that fender washer. I bought a whole pack of them. So if I lose one of them or whatever, well, I can put another one on there and be, be back in the game. Last thing that I'm gonna show you in this part of the video is this last bolt here. This is just a felt blunt. And you can see that tip isn't on there square. In any case, I keep that in there. I don't typically use it, but I've, I've got the ability to uh, use that if I want to. That won't come off of there. Again, these ones, if I, if I get into a place where I've got you know, a bunch of raccoons going around me, if, it's, if the corn's out, I could take any of these heads off, put those on there, and be able to uh, dispatch that animal pretty, pretty easily. Let's see, some other things that I take with me that are, 
are not in my pack for whatever reason. I've got a, a water bottle that I take with me, a nice uh, Nalgene that I'll take water with me in. I've got an empty water bottle that I take with me. I like to keep as much scent as I can out of the woods, so you guys do the, do the math with that. I've got a pack of paper towels that I'll take with me. Again, you never know when you'll need to be able to wipe your hands off or anything like that. And as far as just kit, just stuff that I take with me all the time, uh, this is pretty much it. I've got a lifeline that I keep uh, a tie off, I guess, not a lifeline, but a, a tie off for a tree. I keep that on my safety harness. I've got my range finder that I keep in my safety harness pocket, and I've got a uh, caulking system for my 10 point that I keep in the pocket on my safety harness as well. I keep another one in the truck just so I've got, you know, so I'm not digging for it uh, at the, you know, when I leave the truck every time I go out. But that is pretty much it. That is the layout for my stuff here. Uh, that's most of what I've got. You know, early season, some of this stuff might be staying here. You know, I might take the, the heated gloves out. I might not wear the heated socks. Um, if it was super cold, I might have a heavier jacket that I'd keep with me. But this is my basic layout for a uh, crossbow pack. A lot of this would be pretty similar if you were to be compound bow hunting. I will put all this stuff in the pack back together so you can see that, but we are gonna go ahead and wrap this video up uh, right now. All right, so you can see the pack here. One thing I forgot to mention that I also keep on here is a good thick cushion. You can see how thick that guy is. Uh, again, it's got those buckles on it. This has kept me in the stand a lot too. I've got a lot of stands that I've had set up for a long time that the seats, the cushions have come up missing one way or the other. And this, I mean, it just really makes a difference for me. So this is another piece that I didn't talk about in the earlier part of the video. The last piece that I remembered that I didn't talk about also is binoculars. I got a good set of, I think Bushnell Prime is the binoculars that I carry. And other than that, I think that is the, I think that's the last of the gear that I've got that I carry with me in a normal time of the year. Now I've, I've shot my buck already, so I'm not looking across fields trying to gauge if a, if a deer is a shooter deer or not. Right now if it doesn't have antlers, and it hasn't shed its antlers, if I can see that it's a, a good doe, the odds are pretty good that I'm going to take that shot if one presents itself. But that's my, uh, that's my kit, that's what I've got, that's my layout, that's the gear that I use um, to be successful, that's it right here. Uh, plus the camera that I'm filming this with. So if you have any points of discussion, if you if you came this far, well, I do appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this uh, has brought some thoughts to mind. In any case, I do appreciate you watching it, watching this. If you've got anything that you want to say, any comments that you'd like to leave down below, I look forward to having some conversation about this. I am always up for changing this. This is a a dynamic piece of kit stuff in there changes a lot for me and that's okay but this is uh that's gonna wrap it up for us here so thank you for sticking along this far if you have been subscribed to the channel for a while i appreciate you all for for being there with me for this this has been a good season this is the sixth year that i've had the youtube channel uh, going on seven years but I, i've been trying to to add a little bit more content as I've gone through that. There again, a dynamic thing. So I appreciate you guys. I suppose is the, the way that I want to say that. That's kind of the beginning of the year of 2021. I appreciate you all being there for this. Look forward to hearing from you all. Thanks for sticking around and have a good 2020 and a good rest of this season. If you are still hunting, if you're done, congratulations. It's almost turkey season and fishing season. So I'll see you all out there for some of that as well. Thanks for watching.